What we've seen today and this weekend is only the tip of the iceberg. A half a million people in Washington, D.C. A half a million people in Los Angeles, I got the report. Rallies all around the country, all around the world, in South Africa, in India. 250,000 people marching in London against Trump. This is only the tip of the iceberg. I want to mention as well, socially students with walkouts at over 40 campuses across the country yesterday, because young people historically have been at the forefront of revolutionary events. And it's not just young people historically, it's this generation. Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, the 15 struggle. Bernie Sanders campaign was overwhelmingly a youth movement. And there's a coming new women's liberation movement and new immigrant resistance that again, young people will be at the forefront of. And this will only continue and intensify, not just because young people are historically at the front of struggle, but because of what this generation faces. Low wage jobs, student debt, environmental destruction on a scale never seen before. One of the first generations to ever do worse economically than their parents. But people don't just radicalize and move into action when things are bad for them. It's also that this generation's hopes were raised. What were we told when Obama got elected? That we lived in a post-racial society. What has happened? The gunning down of black folks every day in this country by the police or by right-wing vigilantes. We were told also that Hillary's campaign was going to end sexism. And what do we have as a result of this election? We have a political establishment that's paved the way for a president who glorifies sexual assault and promises to overturn Roe v. Wade. There were expectations built up for young people, and those have come crashing down on the shores of the capitalist reality that we live under. I think one thing that's important about what socialist students did Friday and the actions that were taken was that these walkouts were disruptive. They uh, confronted business as usual. I'm all for the types of marches uh, that happened around the country today, where we all gather together with a permit and we march from point A to point B with a unified message. But also, that's just part of what needs to happen. We need to disrupt. We need to block highways. We need to shut down schools. We need to shut down corporate profits. <laughs> Business as usual is what got us here, right? Trying to rely on a milk toast leadership of the Democratic Party to stop virulent racist right wing populism did not stop virulent racist right wing populism, right? It's the establishment that's devalued life of people of color for so long that could pave the way for this rhetoric of Trump. It's the establishment that's propped up bullies of, of, uh, of occupying armies in the streets that has now gotten a bully in charge of this country. It's an establishment that's told us for so long that billionaires know best for us that now has put a demagogic billionaire into office. They paved the road for him. And that's why I think to fight right-wing populism, we can't rely on the Democratic Party. We need a new party for working class people. I think, I think we need a new party to fight Trump because it's precisely that Democratic Party leadership that he points to to whip up his base, to mislead people down this reactionary road. And I think to not only win those people over, but to fight effectively against that rhetoric, right? We need a new force. Right now, I know there are folks like Tim who are out on the streets fighting, but right now, what do people see who are afraid of Trump's agenda on TV about what the mainstream Democrats are saying to them? They see Hillary Clinton at Trump's inauguration, right? Yeah. They see Obama meeting with him to try and give him advice on how to rule better in order to deport immigrants, because Obama knows something about that, right? <laughs> and that's why we need to present the 
able to present something that speaks clearly for working class people and does not try to serve two masters and do like Tim did and refuse to, and Shama and Jill and refuses to take a dime in corporate cap. We can't depend on the establishment. We need to mobilize from below with determined action. I want to give one example of that type of determined action we need that I think is very relevant today. A few weeks ago, there was an attack on reproductive rights, sound familiar? In Poland. And women went on strike. The majority of women went on strike in the country and occupied the main squares in the cities. Mar March 8th is International Women's Day. It's the 100th anniversary of the women that went on strike that kicked off the Russian Revolution. I think March 8th needs to be a flashpoint for our movements. And I think this speaks to what Chase was saying, but I think it speaks to all the struggles against the Trump agenda. The fight against defunding Planned Parenthood, the fight against overturning Roe v. Wade, cannot just be left to the women's movement. It needs to be a fight of all of us that are opposing Trump. <laughs> Flashpoint of determined resistance, but also May Day we should look to. In 2006, there was a day without an immigrant that shut down the port in Los Angeles, that shut down uh, cities across the country. But the problem was that the labor movement as a whole did not back up those immigrants and also take strike action, also take determined action. And I think this time around, May Day cannot just be a day without an immigrant, but it needs to be met with the slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all, and all of us that oppose Trump's agenda need to stop every single deportation and need to get behind every immigrant organization and working class movement on May Day. <laughs> But it's not just women, LGBT people, it's not just immigrants that are on the chopping block with the Trump agenda. The labor movement itself is gonna fa face a slow chipping away from the Trump administration that eventually wants to lead to right to work, which we call right to work for less, which essentially means the destruction of the labor movement as we know it. That is on the agenda for Trump's administration, right? <laughs> But the unfortunate situation is that most of the labor leaders are already preparing as if this right to work legislation has already passed. They're laying off organizers across the country. They're preparing for to the loss of dues that would come from right to work. Instead of that, there needs to be a preparation to resist a preparation to educate, a preparation to defy. The labor movement in this country has the power to shut down major, uh, major metropolitan areas, has the power to shut down infrastructure, and that's what should be viably threatened when right to work is put on the agenda. <laughs> Trump's agenda crumble. It won't be easy. Chris outlined the forces we're up against, but we can. We can go on the offense and win. Anyone who doesn't believe it should listen to what Jill said, again, what Jill said about the Nixon administration. Environmental protection, end of the Vietnam War, Roe versus Wade, a series of offensive labor struggles for benefits, for increased wages, right? All under the most re one of the most reactionary administrations in memory. Thanks, Ralph We should right. We should we should also remember that that Richard Nixon resigned in disgrace, and we can build a movement that can do the same. This won't be easy because of what our enemy has. And just mocking Trump, or certainly mocking his supporters, is not going to get it done. We need more than that. Relying on politicians is not going to get it done. Remember the Clinton years when movements were demobilized and we saw mass incarceration, the trade deals that now Trump is building his base around people that are upset with the Clinton trade deals, ending welfare as we know it, etc. And that's why I think an independent political force along with these movements is absolutely necessary. But we also should see the possibility for a successful fight back. The establishment is divided in a way that I haven't seen in 
uh, since I've been an activist for 20 years. The two main repressive forces in the world, the CIA and the FBI, <laughs> one took out Clinton and the other's trying to take out Trump, right? The establishment is divided and as Chase said, we need unity. We can't leave the women's organizations alone to fight for reproductive rights. We can't leave the immigrant organizations alone to fight to end deportations. And the same goes for all the other struggles. We need maximum unity. For those of us in this room, that means also you've got to be welcoming to people who aren't as woke as you, right? Mm -hmm. so, I think we need disruptive, determined action. But if you just break windows at a Starbucks with no message about what exactly you're fighting for, if you just use big academic words that won't welcome people, right, that's not the type of determined action that's going to bring folks to We're going to need to do determined action alongside not just folks like Tim who think that the Democratic Party should be reformed. We need to unite and build actions together. But also folks who have never been to a demonstration before, right? They're coming to their first thing because their neighbor might get deported or because they're just afraid for what could go on in their community, right? And we need to fight alongside those people well, and also they may look up to folks we don't look up to, right? Um, and we're going to need to fight to bring those people into the movement to have that debate and discussion about the tactics that are necessary to win. So I've been going on too long, I'm just going to wrap up. <clears throat> but in that situation, we need to be able to draw a line. <clears throat> if we're going to unite with people in movements who want to support the Democrats, or maybe who are former Trump supporters, right? Or so, say a whole bunch of things we don't agree with. <coughs> we need to be able to draw a line at a place that also makes the movement effective. And not subordinate the needs of our struggles against Trump, the needs of the struggles of immigrants or women against Trump, to what the Democratic Party finds acceptable. I think there are ways to do this. One is with concrete demands. If March 8th was to start with the concrete demand of defend and extend reproductive rights, connecting that to other needs working class people have, I think that would be a huge step forward. If on May 1st we demand no deportations and full legalization for all immigrant workers, I think that would be a huge step forward and a huge call that everyone could unite around. And we also not just need clear demands, but we need actions that can win these things. And I think that includes electoral action, as Sean has shown in Seattle, outside the Democratic Party. Yeah. Along with that, we need patient explanation to, to people who aren't there with us yet. But we should make no mistake about our difficult and complicated tasks. We can win. Trump has talked about the agenda for his, his first 100 days. Our first 100 days should be an agenda of escalating resistance with flashpoints on March 8th, International Women's Day, and on May 1st, May Day, of determined resistance and disruption of business as usual. We need to center our actions on mobilizing people from below, on the power of the working class, on demands that resonate with people, but also reach beyond what capitalism and their two parties want to give us. We can win against Trump and his whole, pop, and his whole billionaire class, and that includes being bold. Right now, some folks might have been anti-capitalist for a while and you're used to sort of not saying it much, Right now, young people are joining socialist organizations and subscribing to socialist publications by the thousands and tens of thousands. Let's be bold about what we stand for. The Trump victory may have dealt us lemons, but we can make a cocktail of resistance, revolt, radicalization, and revolutionary politics. We should all get organized, join, and build the struggle against capitalism.